Welcome back to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at the steps needed to install Ubuntu 24.04 LTS server on your Proxmox system. The same steps can be used for installing the server version on other, uh, on other hypervisors as well as on bare metal. But you're going to need to apply your own hypervisor setup steps or skip over the steps where we set up the VM in Proxmox. Okay, the first step we're going to need to do to begin installing Ubuntu Server 24.04 LTS on our Proxmox server is to get an ISO copy. Here at the Ubuntu website, we're going to need to select Products and then select Ubuntu Server. Now we can click on Download Ubuntu Server and Download 24.04. We'll go ahead and close out the automatic window that appears to download 24.04, and then we'll right click on download now, and we'll select copy link address. The terminology may be different for your Windows machine, but it'll still sound similar. Now we're gonna head over to our Proxmox web interface. We're going to select the drive at which we want to store the ISO. By default, Proxmox stores drives in the, by default, Proxmox stores ISOs in the local drive under ISO images. I'm going to select ISO storage and then ISO images on my system because I would like the added size and availability that this drive offers to me. So now we're gonna select download from URL, we're going to right click, we're going to paste in that URL that we achieved from the website, and we're going to press query our URL. The queried URL will give us the name of the ISO that's been extracted from the URL, and we can go ahead and press download. When this download finishes, I'll return to you to show you the steps of setting up a VM and how to install Ubuntu server on your Proxmox machine. Now that our download has finished, we can go ahead and close our window if we haven't already done so. And it's time to start setting up a VM. To set up a VM here in Proxmox, we're gonna go ahead and click Create VM. And we're gonna give it a name. We'll call our server 24-04 today for demo purposes. The name can be whatever you decide to enter in your favor or for whatever you're doing in your project. For OS, we can go ahead and select our storage. Again, by default, yours will be local. We're changing ours today to ISO Store, and then select your image in your dropdown. And we're selecting the live server image because we are going to be installing the server version. For OS type, we'll leave ours as Linux, as Ubuntu is a Linux operating system. Pressing Next, we're going to select QEMU Guest Agent and leave everything else as default. For disks, we're going to select Discard if we're using an SSD. I am not using an SSD, so I won't be selecting this card, but I will increase this size. Increase the size of the drive to whatever you need. By default, it's going to come at 32 gigs. Proxmox is only going to use the amount of storage that your VM requires, so allocating it extra isn't really a problem as far as taking up other disk information. However, if you are, have allocated more, you will eventually get a warning message saying that you've allocated more disk space than is available on disk. We can go ahead and press next at this point, select the number of cores. And if we come over to the Ubuntu site, we can see that system requirements require a one gigahertz processor or better, one gig of RAM, and five gigs of free hard drive space. So we're fine to get to leave this at one core. We will be assigning two today. The default CPU type for Proxmox is going to be the x86-64 V2 ASA. If you're using a cluster or something, it may be a good idea to select a different CPU type that is not the host, and the default is usually a pretty good option for said application. I will, however, be selecting host today because I find that I get a little better performance with my projects if I do. Pressing next, we can give it RAM. 2 gigs is 2048. It says that we only need 1 gig of memory, so we'll stick with our 2 gigs by default. Next is going to be our network configuration. If you have custom networking bridges set up or need VLAN tags, this is where you're going to enter. The default is going to be VMDR0 with a VertIO Ethernet driver. Both of these are going to work fine for us. 
and be fully compatible with Ubuntu. If for some reason you need a different type of Ethernet device, either the Intel E1000 or the Realtek, you can go ahead and select them here. Pressing next, it'll give us a readout of what we've configured. And if everything looks great, we can go ahead and hit finish. Pressing finish tells Proxmox to go ahead and create our VM, and our VM will show up just as it did here. If for some reason it's hanging up and you see a swirling wheel, we can go ahead and check logs by double clicking on the VM creation log in at the bottom of our screen. We can see we got task okay, so everything has completely been set up successfully. Now I can go ahead and press start and console, and that'll begin starting up the Proxmox VM and allow us to begin installing Ubuntu. At this screen, we're going to go ahead and press enter, telling Ubuntu that we want to begin installing the Ubuntu server version. So after a brief startup period, we can begin configuring what our installation is going to look like. The first thing we're going to do is select English by pressing enter. And since we're going to be using the US English keyboard layout, we can go ahead and press enter again. We want to install Ubuntu server, and we don't really need to install the minimized version of Ubuntu server, but if you did, if you didn't want a lot of the third-party applications and stuff that come pre-packaged for server management with Ubuntu server, you could install that. Pressing tab to bring your cursor over where underneath the X, pressing the down key and pressing spacebar. Again, I want to use the full version of Ubuntu server, so I will be selecting the default version. And now since I'm here, I'm going to press tab to move through these until I select done and press enter. To move around this entire console, you can use the keys as such, as explained just before. The default setup of DHCP version 4, so this system won't have a static IP address that will be assigned by my router. If you did want to use, set up a static IP address, you could do so here by moving your cursor up and pressing enter and filling out the correct information. I'm pressing enter at this point to select done. Proxy address we don't need, so we're going to press done. If you were using a proxy for some reason inside of a business or something to reach the outside internet, you would need to enter the address here. Oh, the system knew how to interact with the proxy. Ubuntu at this point is reaching out to the outside internet and it's making sure that it has communication and it's reading in any new package lists or whatnot that it needs. Now it's time to configure your drive for installation. We're going to use the entire drive so the default X's are going to work fine for us. We can press tab until we select done with the green box and press enter. Again we can press enter because this all looks correct. Down arrow key to select continue and press enter. Now we can use a username that we desire, server name that we desire. Your server name is going to be what you hear as commonly referred to as your host name. And this is the server's name that will appear when you're doing network searches and as such, as well as your system password. Finally, we'll press tab to select done and hit enter. We don't want to use Ubuntu Pro, so we're going to skip for now. So we'll select continue and press enter. If you wish to use SSH, this is the point to install it. And we can go ahead and hit spacebar to select open SSH server. Press tab until we get to done and hit enter. We're also asked if we want to install any other pre-configured packages here on Ubuntu. We do not, so we won't select them. So we'll press tab for done and enter. Now that Ubuntu is done installing, we're given the option to reboot if we would like. So we can go ahead and use the tab key to select reboot now and press enter. We can press enter at this point because Proxmox will automatically eject the CD-ROM and the reboot process will take effect. Now we can log in with the username and password that we set up during the installation. Now, something weird that Ubuntu Server does, it finishes out doing some of your initial installation or start rather startup after it gives you the command prompt to log in. 
We can go ahead and enter our user ID though and our password. Now that we've logged in, we can then start the first steps that I like to do with every new server, and that's to run a sudo apt date, and then I'll string in two Amber Stams and run a sudo apt upgrade dash y to make sure we install all of the updates with the same command that we updated the repository. Again, we'll have to enter our user password and the process will happen. Now you notice we didn't have anything in to install today and that's because this operating system released about a day or two ago at the time of filming. I hope you enjoyed this video, you found it informational, and you're able to start using Ubuntu Server either on bare metal, some other hypervisor, or with your Proxmox system. As always, have a good night.